the Aristocats. Duchess was a perfect cat. She had soft, smooth fur and bright blue eyes. When she walked, she took little steps and held her tail up in just the right way. Duchess had three kittens. She was teaching them to be perfect kittens. Tutu was learning to paint. Marie was learning to sing. And Berlay was learning to play the piano. And they were all learning to hold up their tails in just the right way. Duchess and her kittens lived with a very rich old lady named Madame. Madame was very good to her cats. She gave them the softest pillows and the thickest cream and the prettiest bows. Madame had a butler named Edgar. Edgar hated cats. He hated fluffing their pillows and fixing their cream and tying their bows. Every day, Edgar muttered to himself, These cats have got to go. One night, Edgar put something extra in the cream. Sleeping pills. Then he took the little bowls of cream to Duchess and her kittens. Do not forget your manners, said Duchess. Thank you, Edgar, said Marie, Tutu, and Berlay. Duchess and the kittens lapped up the cream. It was delicious. But soon, Duchess felt very sleepy. Her eyelids began to droop. Berlay and Marie were yawning. Tutu was already asleep. When all the cats were asleep, Edgar put them in their basket. Late that night, he carried the basket out to his motorcycle. He took the cats for a long ride. When he was far away from the city, he left the basket under a bridge. Now they will never find their way back, thought Edgar. In the morning, Duchess and the kittens woke up. Everything looked strange. Where are we, Mama? asked Tutu. Do not be afraid, dear, said Duchess. I will think of a way to get home. But Duchess did not know what to do. Just then she saw another cat. Hi, called the cat. I'm Tom O'Malley, the alley cat. Duchess could see that he was an alley cat. He held his tail all wrong. Mr. O'Malley, said Duchess, can you tell me the way to the city? Tell you, fair lady, said O'Malley, I will take you there on my magic carpet. When the kittens heard this, they leapt out of the basket. Do you really have a magic carpet? asked Marie. Kittens, cried O'Malley. I didn't know you had kittens. I was thinking of a magic carpet for two. Come along, children, said Duchess. Mr. O'Malley cannot help us. And Duchess and her kittens walked away. Wait, called O'Malley. I see my magic carpet coming down the road. O'Malley's magic carpet looked like an old milk truck on its way to the city. O'Malley landed on the milk truck. He hissed and howled. Help, screamed the driver. The truck screeched to a stop and the driver got out. Where is that stupid cat, muttered the driver. He did not see who was climbing onto his truck, so he got back in and drove down the road. Is anybody ready for breakfast, said O'Malley. Where is it, asked Tutu. Just close your eyes and wiggle your noses, said O'Malley. I need a little magic for this. So the kittens closed their eyes and wiggled their noses. O'Malley uncovered a milk can. The magic worked, said O'Malley. Open your eyes and see. The kittens opened their eyes. Milk, cried Marie. O'Malley is terrific. How true, said O'Malley. After a while, the driver turned around. Jumping jailfish, he cried. Cats! He stopped the truck and chased them away. What an awful man, said Duchess. Now we will not get to the city. 
Stick with me, Duchess, said O'Malley. I know the way. O'Malley is so smart, said Marie. O'Malley is so brave, said Tutu. When I grow up, said Berlay, I'm going to be just like O'Malley. They came to some train tracks. The tracks went over a river. The kittens pretended to be a train. Woo-woo, cried Berlay. Clickety-clack, clickety-clack, said Tutu and Marie. Suddenly, they heard a real train coming. It was right behind them. O'Malley got everyone under the tracks just in time. The train whizzed by over their heads. Marie was so scared she let go and fell off the bridge. Help! cried Marie. O'Malley did a daring dive. He pulled Marie out of the river. How can I ever thank you? asked Duchess. It's nothing, said O'Malley. After that, the cats walked along the road. At last they reached the city, but it was very late. We will have to spend the night with my friends, said O'Malley. They climbed up to a roof and looked into a window. O'Malley's friends were having a party. Hey, O'Malley is back, cried Scat Cat. Everyone had fun. Scat Cat sang a song. It went like this. Rinky Tinky, think of that, to be a cat without a hat. Sing it, Scat, said O'Malley. Yeah, sing it, Scat, said Berlay and Marie. Duchess and O'Malley danced all the dances O'Malley knew. After the party was over, O'Malley and Duchess sat on the roof. You have been very kind to us, said Duchess. We will miss you, but tomorrow we must go back to Madame. The kittens were watching from the window. I don't want to go back, said Berlay. I want to stay with O'Malley. But the next morning, they went back to Madame's house. O'Malley waved goodbye. Edgar let the cats in. He was not happy to see them come back. Edgar put the cats in a bag. He put the bag in a trunk. Then he called a moving van to take the trunk far, far away. Delivered to Timbuktu. Do not return. Edgar carried the trunk out to the street. The van was waiting. O'Malley heard Duchess and the kittens mewing inside. O'Malley leapt at Edgar. He hissed and howled. Madame heard the howling. She rushed outside to see what was going on. There were Duchess and her kittens. Oh, my dearest Duchess, cried Madame. You are all safe. Madame saw that Edgar was trying to get rid of her cats. You are fired, said Madame. Edgar went away and never came back. Madame said she needed a cat who was smart and brave, so O'Malley decided to stay. He was a very good father. How did we ever get along without you, asked Duchess. O'Malley just smiled. The end.